Trumpets of Truth International, serving up this food for thought. Man, the whole world has gone crazy. Oh, it sure has. Just like this blast. Listen to this. First graders shoot classmates, kill five. How did mankind get here? So far from the beginning perfection. It almost seems like things have just about reached their end somehow. You know what I mean? To be honest, I think it just about has, Carol. Man has messed up everything on this planet because of his disobedience. I mean, look at what damage we've done because Adam and Eve chose the wisdom of Satan over God's wisdom. It's like how God, in the beginning, created everything after its own kind. And yet, mankind allowed angels to cross with them and bore children to them that are our ancestors today. Yeah, and now we wonder why our bodies are diseased. Why autism? Why mental problems? All that infirmity that has taken over God's creation, all because of that blunder. Isn't it awesome how, even though mankind has done so much against God's will, he still mercifully tried to help us through giving us his law. Did we obey them? No. Hardly anyone walks in God's will today either because of it. Yes, and God gave us a whole set of rules that had we obeyed, we would have at least become a little stronger but Satan weakened us so badly with the crossing of the species. I agree. As an example, one of the rules was we were not to marry outside of God's people. We were to stay away from the people of the land. They walked in lust and perversion, pagan religions. Had we obeyed? and stayed within God's people that had morals and a law to follow, over the years we would have improved. And as time went by, the angel blood, along with their traits, would have been filtered out. Yes, and since we didn't obey, the blood of the angels became stronger, and our traits became worse through each generation. Thus, the child that shot his classmates. Well, talk about disobedient. You know how in the laws of Moses, it says that we are to rest the land from planting every seven years? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we didn't do it. And now the food we eat isn't at all as nutritious as it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Speaking of food, Look how far we've gone from the original diet God gave us in the garden, too. By becoming meat eaters, we created so many unnatural conditions that the whole earth is paying for now. Yes, and as what we see, the climate has changed. Diseases have been introduced to man, and the animals have paid a price for our appetites with their lives. I know that God told us to go on and eat meat, to not call unclean what he's called clean. But there's a big difference between God's permissive will and his perfect will. When we walk in God's perfect will, things work perfectly. But look what has happened by walking in God's permissive will. Salmonella, trichnosis, mad cow disease, bird flu, on and on. 
I'd rather walk in God's perfect will. And now look at today's economy. Rich people, poor people, those that have it all and those that have nothing. Had we done it God's way, everyone would have had plenty. Yeah, in the garden, God supplied all the food that we were designed to need. But when we fell from his grace, he said that we would eat by the sweat of our brow. But even then, God graciously came up with a way that all people would be satisfied. They were to take what they needed for their personal family to sustain them to the next harvest and then take the rest of the storehouse. Well, by being obedient to this, if someone had crop failure or some other type of a tragedy would happen, taking from the abundance, there would always be ample supplies in the storehouse to help meet his needs. Yes, his government, his priests were fed out of the storehouse and they originally obeyed the rules and their harvest yielded abundantly. The excess became too many for the storehouse. God blessed them mightily for their obedience. But the neat part is the excess was handed back down to the people and Israel was the richest nation in the world. Yeah, but it didn't take long for man to disobey in this area too. They stopped resting the land. They started claiming the produce as theirs. And what took place was that God's house got very little. And in fact, what they did bring was not the best of the crop either. But again, God was gracious. He said, keep it all. Just give me 10%. And make offerings according to your own heart condition. I wonder how many people are being obedient to that today. Unfortunately, the people that tithe to the churches, that harbor hypocrites and false doctrine, or are just plain morally lax, are not giving to God's storehouses. Satan may bless this, but certainly not God. That's for sure. And another place I can see that mankind has really messed up is the thousands of dollars that we're spending to study man's knowledge. And look at the millions of dollars that have been spent on colleges and schools around the earth that are just spawning the same knowledge and wisdom that Eve chose. Yes, the same foolish knowledge that infrastructured this whole world, it's messed up systems. What about the governments of this world? They condone the things that God forbids. For the most part, the laws they make are geared towards making themselves rich and they allow us to just survive mainly to serve them. And Satan's knowledge steers the minds of man to just accept this. Because of their high position or title, for the most part, God's will and morality is totally ignored. There's a scripture in 1 Samuel that explains about all this. So let's turn there and we'll see how it went. First Samuel 8, 5 through 7. And the elder said to him, Look, you are old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people, 
in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And look at the condition of the world societies with its man-made governments and its church leadership. I mean, because of this, today's generation is the worst. They are in so opposition to God's laws. And the sexual sin is worse than what it was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it makes me want to cry. Is worse than in what it was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Do they really think that God is going to let this go unpunished? <sighs> Truly, the abomination of desolation is standing in the holy place as spoken of in Daniel. And it is firmly in place. And it's accepted by the world systems and its people. I would be scared to pieces if I didn't know that the body of Christ is rising. That the house of David is near completion. And that there is safety, shelter, and peace for the body of Christ. For God's people. Yes, and we know that the Archangel Michael will be standing up against the evil spirits that occupy the vessels that make up Satan's house and defeat Antichrist, the body of Satan. But you know, it's comforting to know that there are people all over the world that are seeking God's light. They're seeking his end time knowledge and are knocking on the door of opportunity to learn more. To know that the living waters of God's knowledge is splashing across the earth, splashing over, pulverizing and destroying the false doctrines and rolling right over the lies. And to know that it's bringing peace and stability while the world is going under. Yeah, and as the world goes down, the kingdom is there for those who love his knowledge, who want to walk in his will and be a part of his kingdom. And you know what's neat about our little coffee clutch? is when God's people are talking about the things of God, the angels are writing down every word and taking it to the Father. This truly has been a prosperous afternoon. And you know what? The world may be a mess, but we in spiritual Zion are doing okay. Yeah. 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 Hope you enjoyed this food for thought and we'll see you next time.